Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Highly controversial meme will infuriate Democrats, but history proves it's dead right. The American left goes through rage cycles. This cycle, the rage is the enforcement of immigration law, which of course leads back to identity politics. The new champion of both of these things is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the card-carrying socialist who unseated veteran party hack Joseph Crowley in a New York House primary last week. Since then, Ocasio-Cortez thought has quickly become as readily absorbed as Mao Zedong thought in 1960s China. Take, for instance, this nugget of joy from Bernardine Sanders. The remark was in response to the fact that some people had begun to check Ocasio-Cortez's girl from the Bronx story and found out that it was lacking in what we like to call fact, an unpopular, problematic concept in the Democrat firmament, but it seems to illustrate a larger truth, that any attempt to question Ocasio-Cortez or her calls to end enforcement of most immigration laws and to abolish ICE is rooted in racism. Yet, lurking behind all of this tolerance is a history that the Democrats don't want to discuss which may reveal their real reasons behind their enthusiastic embrace of destroying ICE and immigration enforcement. Ocasio-Cortez's tweet is big on identity, and it's just the latest manifestation of the kind of identity politics Democrats have been using to feed their power going back to the Civil War and before. Yes, behind all of that peace, love and toleration is the fact that the Democrats are mostly interested in numbers and getting the votes, but beyond all keeping control of their fiefdoms. 160 years ago. Those were the plantations of the South. Democrats were the ones who controlled the South, and they did their damnedest to make sure slavery stayed at all costs, including starting a war that took more than half a million American lives. A century ago, it was Jim Crow Dixie, still a Democrat fiefdom. African Americans were second-class citizens, kept in place by segregation. They couldn't vote, they couldn't go to the same schools as whites and they had no civil control over their own destiny. Once segregation began to melt thanks to the judiciary, things began to change, although the racist attitude sure didn't. When Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, he's alleged to have said, I'll have those NS voting Democratic for 200 years. That's never been proven. What we can document is his explanation for why he appointed Thurgood Marshall as the first black Supreme Court justice instead of a lesser-known jurist, when I appoint a black man to the bench, I want everybody to know he's a black man, the president said according to biographer Robert Dalek. The Democrats' fiefdom quickly moved from the solid South to urban areas. There, segregation still existed, it was just by neighborhood. The trick this time is that both young white millennials drawn by the liberal, cosmopolitan atmosphere and minorities kept shackled to entitlements with little opportunity to escape both gave their votes to the Democrats. And, among the latter, you can count illegal immigrants. Their promised protection by the Democrats, all for low wages and a depressed labor market. In return for entitlement outlays and reduced job opportunities, they skew the numbers in Congress and the Electoral College as well as provide the demographic shift liberals want. That's why Democrats are so angry about the idea of enforcing immigration law. It's not something that dates back a few years or even a few decades. It dates back to the antebellum period. You might say it's their real identity. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.